Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here, and today we'll be going through how to install the latest release of Ubuntu 20.04. We'll first download it, then I'll explain how to flash it onto a disk, we'll boot that disk, and finally run through how to install it on an empty storage space of your choice. Today's an exciting day because today is the official release date of Ubuntu 20.04, and if you're new and stopping by to watch and install today, please take a moment to subscribe below and hit the notification bell for more installs. I'm here on the Ubuntu.com website where we will download Ubuntu 20.04 long-term support from, and there's really two options. Since it's a brand new release, you have the option of doing it right on the home page. It says download Ubuntu 20.04 LTS right here. It'll take us straight to the download, or you can go to the download section up top, hit the drop down, and then choose the Ubuntu desktop version, unless you want a different version, of course, server, IoT, or cloud. But the one we're interested in today, Ubuntu desktop, and we'll hit the 20.04 LTS. This will go and automatically choose a mirror closest to you, and the download will start automatically down below. If you need to look at more mirrors, you can simply do it by hitting download, going to Ubuntu desktop, and clicking on the CR alternative downloads. Once you've done that, you can go down to the bottom here. And once you've done that, you can see that you have the network installer available here instead of the full image of 2004. Or if you go down to the very bottom, you'll see all the Ubuntu mirrors. If you click on that, now you can go ahead and select a mirror closest to you, just in case the one you're currently using or the one that Ubuntu gives to you is a little bit too slow. So I could search for mine, so the United States here. And you can see all the different mirrors and the top speeds of those mirrors for downloading. So let's select one real quick, perhaps this Pacific Northwest. And you can see here I have the mirror location available to me. So if I click on that, you can see that we have a varying range of different versions available to us, including 20.04. If we click on that, we have the desktop image as well as the server install. And then if we look down here at the bottom, we could download the desktop image right here, which is Ubuntu 20.04 desktop AMD 64 for a 64 bit architecture. And now that I've downloaded the ISO, I'm going to launch and use the Belena Etcher app in order to flash the image onto a USB CD or DVD. Let me go ahead and start the Belena Etcher app. So I'll hit the start menu and just search for Belena, start it up. And Belena Etcher is an easy to use application available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below if you want to download the application. You can also use any other application that can create a bootable disk, such as UNet Bootin or Rufus. First thing I want to do is select an image, and that's the one we just got done downloading. So you see here I have Ubuntu 2004 desktop AMD 64 available, and I'm going to go ahead and click on that and hit open. Next, I'm going to go ahead and put in a USB CD or DVD since I already have one in. It's already automatically populated here. But if you have more than one, you'll want to hit the change button and make sure you select the proper USB CD or DVD because the contents of it will be erased in order to put the Ubuntu installer onto it. So make sure you're selecting the proper USB CD or DVD and then go ahead and hit continue. And once you've done that, you can hit the flash button. The application will ask you for administrative privileges. Go ahead and give it. And after you flash the disk, you'll take it over to the computer or server where you want to install the Ubuntu 2004 on and then insert it. Then you'll have to boot into your BIOS in order to change the settings around and select the newly created bootable disk to boot first. This is usually done by finding the correct key to boot into your BIOS for your particular computer. It's usually one of the F keys like F2 or F10. Then you'll find a tab usually called boot order and you'll have to exchange the order so that the bootable disk is first to boot. After you have that set up, you will save and exit out of your BIOS and you should see a screen similar to this if you did everything correctly. If you went ahead and made it this far, please hit the like button. It really does help me out. All right, if you see this screen, you've successfully made it to the install portion. Really, there's two options here to go ahead and install with. We can go ahead and either click on Ubuntu or Ubuntu with Save Graphics. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card, you might want to go ahead and select this option instead. Otherwise, you'll go ahead and choose the first option, Ubuntu. All right, and here we're being welcomed by the Ubuntu installer, so we'll go ahead and select a language, and then we'll simply go ahead and click on Install Ubuntu. And on the next screen, we are asked to go ahead and, and select our keyboard layout. Well, the default English US is fine for me. You can also test your keyboard by going ahead and by typing in this text field here. And I typed in QWERTY and I got, and I got out QWERTY, so that seems to all work fine. You can also use the detect keyboard layout option if you want to automatically detect your keyboard's layout. And once you've done so, go ahead and hit continue. Next, we're being asked what kind of an installation we want to make. Well, the normal installation is fine for me. That comes with a web browser, some utilities some office suite, as well as 
games, and media players. If you want the minimal installation, which comes with just basic utilities and a web browser, you can go ahead and select that one instead. The other two options are download updates while installing Ubuntu. As it says, it saves time after the installation, so you can go ahead and select that if you want your updates made. Then you also have the install the third-party software. This is for graphics and Wi-Fi drivers that may need additional support through proprietary software and drivers. So you only have to select this option if you know that you have some kind of hardware that isn't supported by the standard drivers and kernel. Otherwise, you can go ahead and hit continue. All right, and here we can go ahead and select to erase the disk and install Ubuntu. So as it says, it will erase the entire contents of whatever storage disk that you plan on installing Ubuntu on. That means any and all files, as well as any operating systems. And it warns you of that as well right here. So you'll wanna make sure you have a clean disk where you're installing Ubuntu on, that you have nothing else on it. And the next thing we'll check out is the advanced features. So in advanced features, you can select whether or not you wanna use an LVM for logical value management. This allows you to control storage spaces a little bit easier and make snapshots if necessary of the system. And you can also check the box if you install the LVM in order to encrypt the new Ubuntu installation, which is an extra step for security and will require two passwords, one for your user and one for the hard disk. Experimental allows you to use the ZFS file system. If that's something you'd like to go ahead and try out, feel free to. Although today I'm just gonna go ahead and stick with none since we're beginners. And now we can go ahead and hit the install now button. Ubuntu is warning you one last time that it's about to write the changes that you requested to the disk, meaning everything will be erased from the disk and things will be repartitioned in order to go ahead and install Ubuntu on them. Well, I know I have nothing on my disk, I want to go ahead and continue the install. All right, now we're being asked about what time zone we're in. Today, I'll go ahead and be in Toronto. Make sure you go ahead and select whatever time zone that you're currently located in order to get your clock right, and then go ahead and hit continue. Following that, we're asked for our name, so I'm gonna go ahead and type in Savvy Nick. As well as for my computer's name, I'm going to use a Savvy Nick as well. We can also pick a username. This is the username that you will be logging in with. So Savvy Nick works for me, and your computer's name is what the rest of the network or any other computer that sees your Ubuntu desktop will see as its name. We're going to go ahead and choose a password for our username. So go ahead and type that in and then go ahead and confirm that password. Following that, we have two options down here. Require my password on login versus login automatically. Well, if you select a login automatically, a person can just reboot your computer and then be logged in without a password. So most of the time I go ahead and select the second option, but you can choose whatever you'd like. Go ahead and hit continue once you got everything in. And now the Ubuntu install has started. Ubuntu is one of the most used and user-friendly Linux distributions out there, and their focus is offering a great free solution to Linux with a great community for support. It deploys the GNOME desktop environment with its standard desktop installation and is available in different projects from desktop, server, IoT, and even embedded support. This is a great place to start if you're new to the Linux experience and you're looking for something with great support and stability. A lot of other distributions build off the Ubuntu distribution and add their own little tweaks, which I'm sure we'll be seeing a bunch of updates coming to other distributions here in the next few weeks with this new Ubuntu 20.04 release. All right, and once the install is complete, you'll be prompted by this dialog box to go ahead and restart your computer now. So we'll go ahead and select that option. We're asked to go ahead and remove our installation medium at this point and press enter. So go ahead and remove your USB, CD, or DVD from your computer so you can go ahead and press enter. And once you do, you'll be rebooted into your newly installed system. Go ahead, press enter and give it a few moments. Let's go ahead and select our user and then type our password in so we can go ahead and enter our desktop environment. And if you see this screen, you've officially installed Ubuntu 20.04. Congratulations and welcome to your newly installed Ubuntu 20.04 desktop environment. Let's take a quick look around the desktop at this point. And you may have had some messages shown to you by the Ubuntu greeter screen. You can go ahead and scroll through those real quick or even exit out. What we have here is some icons that you can drag around the complete desktop screen here. And the two icons are the trash icon and the home users file directory. On the left hand side, you have Firefox, their default web browser, Thunderbird, their default mail client. You have files, which allow you to use the file browser. 
Rhythmbox, their media player, LibreOffice Writer, their word processor, Ubuntu Software Center, in order to install applications if you want, help, which will allow you to get some help from the community. And if you have any mounted images, they will show up down here. If you hit the activities, you can see the workspaces that are currently being worked on. I currently only have the one, but you can exchange between them here. And then in the middle, you can search for various different applications on your computer. If you go to the bottom left-hand corner, you can show applications and see all the various different applications that come with Ubuntu 20.04. Since we did the default installation and not the minimal, we have plenty of applications available to us. The other thing you can do is, of course, search for various different types of applications up here as well. And back on the desktop in the middle, you'll see the current date and time, as well as a calendar widget available to you and any and all notifications will show up in here. You can also set the do not disturb if you don't want to get notifications. On the right hand side, we can go and check out just a few more things. One being the volume control, another being the current wired or wireless connection that you have. And if you click on here, you can turn off the Wi-Fi or wired connection as well as get to the settings for it. You have settings for the overall Ubuntu operating system, or you can power down or log out of the current machine. The one last thing I want to check out is how the resources are being used. So let's just launch HTOP real quick. And let me make this a little bigger so we can see it a little better. And as you can see here, we have around 795 megabytes of memory being currently used, maybe a little bit under that. And the processor keeps going between about zero and 3% on the CPU load for the cores. We also have around 113 tasks running with 251 threads. And you can see the various different types of processes running in the background. Well, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this installation tutorial of Ubuntu 20.04. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please post them in the comments section below. Also make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Thanks for watching.